episode five, the last episode in my crochet along for the road play mat. In part one, I showed you how to make the uh, beginnings of the vegetable patch with the little pockets of where we can put the little vegetables. Um, I've given some suggestions on easy ways of doing this as well. You could just make a plain 15 rows and just make little squares and sew them on to make little pockets if you prefer, if you find this too hard. But in part two now, we are gonna move on to, I'm gonna show you how to make vegetables and we've got a little radish, uh, a leek and uh, a little carrot as well. And I'm also going to be showing you how to make the simple flower field. So let's begin with the vegetables. I want to start off with the carrots. So for this, this tutorial you are going to need some green yarn and uh, green yarn, that's orange yarn, orange yarn and green yarn. <laughs> Uh, you're also going to need some pink yarn or purple for the radish and you're going to need some white as well and you also may need some extra colours for some flowers such as some yellow, I've got some yellow here. Okay, so let's start off with the carrot. So, and these are all DK light worsted weight yarns and this is a yarn weight of three and we're using a 3.5 millimeter E4 crochet hook and you're also going to need a pair of scissors a yarn needle and a little bit of toy stuffing as well for the, um, the vegetables. You can use yarn scraps as well. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is take our orange yarn and we're going to chain four. Just chain four. Do a little slip knot. Let's move those out of the way to get a clear background. And let's chain four. So one two, three, and four, chain four. Then what we're going to do is we're going to find our first chain and put a hook in there and do a slip stitch. So bring the yarn through the first chain and straight through the loop on your hook to do a little slip stitch. And that creates a loop of your chains which are joined at the beginning and in the end. And in the middle there is a hole. Into that hole, we need to work six single crochet okay so we put our hook into that center our loop bring the yarn through the middle and just wrapping it around the chains now we do a single crochet we need six of those so one back into the center two back into the center three back into the center four five and the last one six and just to bring in that hole a little bit we're just going to pull our tail end should see the hole close if the hole doesn't close probably means you've worked into your chain your first chain by accident instead of the center of the loop then what we're going to do is we're just going to slip stitch into our first single crochet find your first single crochet and do a little slip stitch to join the round so you go and you've got six single crochet. Now what we're going to do is we're actually just going to pull up our yarn and put that down because we need to get some green yarn and this is the only way to secure it before we finish making the carrot. Because it's such a small carrot, <laughs> we need to do this a bit differently. So we're gonna take three short lengths of our green yarn, about that long. Okay, we want three of these. Two. Tricky doing this on camera. Three. So you've got three short lengths of green yarn. And what we're going to do is we are going to turn our little orange carrot over so we've got the wrong side, which is where the tail end is most noticeable. We're just going to cut this tail end down, taking a yarn needle. Take one end of your green little threads and then on the underneath, the underside, so you want to turn your little orange bit of carrot over, you just want to sew preferably near to the centre of that hole, centre hole, as close as possible to the centre. You just want to sew 
the end through but don't bring it all the way through just want it to catch like that then we're going to double knot it into place and this just means that our green shoots at the end of our carrot are secure oops nearly lost the end of my orange careful not to pull your orange you lost my orange so i'm going to double knot that yeah it just means it's more secure and it's all done so we can finish the carrot okay so we've secured those into place. And we're going to do that for the other two pieces as well. So I'm just going to repeat that for the other two pieces of green yarn, just sewing them on and double knotting them into place as close to that center hole as possible on the inside as it's going to be. Okay. Okay, so I've double knotted those three pieces of green thread onto the underneath of our carrot. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take the ends, all the ends, and sew them through the center to the right side, okay, which is going to be coming out of the top of our carrot. So thread all of these to the other side. Okay, so there we go, we've just sewn all those knotted green threads to the right side. Then what we're going to do is going to put our hook back in. We should still have a stitch count of six. Okay, so then what we're going to do is we are going to chain one, don't count that as a stitch and you want to put your hook back into the same single crochet you just slip stitched into, so go back into there and do another single crochet, let's do one single crochet in there, and do one single crochet in each stitch around, keeping a stitch count of six, so next stitch two, next stitch three, Four, next stitch five, and the last stitch six. Count as you go because there sometimes looks like there's an extra stitch at the end, but that's what I call a fake stitch. It's there to trick you. So count as you go. So skip that fake stitch, skip the chain one, and find your first single crochet that you did and slip stitch into there. Which is still have a stitch count of six. I'm going to do that once more. We're going to chain one, do one single crochet in the same single crochet you just slip stitched into, go back into there, do a single crochet, and do one single crochet in each stitch around. So you've got a stitch count of six still. So that's one, next stitch two. We have to flatten it as you go, it's a bit fiddly. Next stitch three. Stitch four, stitch five, and the last stitch six. And then we need to, there's our fake stitch, which looks like another stitch, but we need to skip that. Skip the chain one, which has probably disappeared. Find your first single crochet and slip stitch into there. You've still got a stitch count of six. If you find it really, really fiddly, you may want to swap to a smaller hook. I'm just doing it in the same hook size for consistency, but you may prefer to swap to a smaller hook size. Okay, so it should look a little something like that. Then what we're going to do is we're going to just pause there, just pull our yarn up and just take a little bit of stuffing and we're going to stuff the end of our carrot. So I'm just going to stuff this carrot quickly. A little trick for stuffing small spaces is get some blunt scissors and then the metal of the scissors creates a little bit of friction just to get a bit of stuffing in there. Okay, and you probably want to just overstuff a little bit so you can spread it out to the rest of the carrot at the end. Like so then what we're going to do is put a hook back in. We are going to chain one, don't count that as a stitch, and starting in the same stitch we just slip stitched into, go back into that first single crochet you just slip stitched into, 
hook in there and starting in this stitch we're going to single crochet two stitches together so you're going to bring the yarn through there then stop and go into the next stitch bring the yarn through yarn over pull through all three to single crochet those two together those stitches together and we're going to do that for the next two stitches as well so I'm just going to push that stuffing down a little bit more let's get out of my way So go into the next stitch, bring the yarn through and stop. Go into the next stitch, bring the yarn through, three loops, yarn over, pull through all three. That leaves you with two stitches and it gets a little bit fiddly. You can swap to a smaller hook if you prefer, but go into the next stitch, bring the yarn through, go into the last stitch, make sure to come up for the middle. Bring the yarn through, yarn over, pull through all three, and that reduces our stitch count down to three. And then what we're going to do is we are just going to, if you can, there's our little fake stitch pretty much disappeared, and our chain one's disappeared. You need to find that first single crochet. So what I recommend doing is just bringing out your hook a sec, finding the stitch with your hook first, just bringing it up, the one you need to slip stitch into. Then put your hook back in. Then bringing your hook over. Really awkward angle. Just put your hook in there, bring the yarn through and do a little slip stitch to join. If you really struggle with that being too fiddly, you can just cut your yarn. So I'm going to cut the yarn now and just bring that through. It's already cut. You can just literally pull up straight away and then we're going to sew the remaining gap closed. Okay, so we're just going to go in into the next stitch and over. Let's find the next stitch. There it is into the next stitch and over so then into the next stitch and over just sew over really until you get a point you can't really see the stitches and just sew out down through the bottom and there we go there is our little finished carrot and then we just cut the end of our yarn and then what we're going to do is we just trim down the top tops of our carrot top top bits of our carrot can't speak today and there is our little finished mini carrot like so now we're going to move on to the let's do the radish next okay we'll move on to the radish okay so for the radish we're going to get our pink yarn you can also use purple or any other radish colored yarn and we're going to chain four to begin with our pink yarn chain four one two three four chain four and then we're going to slip stitch in our first chain so find your first chain and bring the yarn through straight for the loop on your hook just do a little slip stitch that creates a little loop where there's a hole in the middle and in that center hole we're going to do five single crochet this time let's put the hook into the middle bring the yarn through do five single crochets so there's one two three the last one five and just pull that tail end close the hole if it doesn't close it probably means you've got in your chain one instead so you've got five single crochet in there and then what we're going to do is we're going to slip stitch into our first single crochet slip stitch into there to join around okay then what we're going to do is we're going to chain one I'm going to do one single crochet in the same stitch we just slip stitched into. So go back into there, do a single crochet. 
Then in the next stitch we're going to do two single crochet. One and another one in the same stitch. You've got two in there, two single crochet. Then in the next stitch we're going to do one single crochet, just the one. One single crochet. Then in the next stitch we're going to do two single crochet. One and another one in the same stitch. And in the last stitch we're going to do one single crochet, just the one. Okay, one single crochet. It always looks like there's another stitch there, it's quite big, but that's actually a fake stitch, it's not a real stitch. Your stitch count should have gone up to seven. You want to skip that fake stitch, skip your tiny chain one, and find that first single crochet that you did all the way over here. And do a slip stitch into there. Okay, pull that. You should have a stitch count of seven. Then we're going to do the third round, we're going to chain one. Do one single crochet in the same stitch we just slip stitched into, so go back into there. Just below your chain one and do a single crochet. We'll do one single crochet in each stitch around, keeping a stitch count of seven. So next stitch two. Next stitch three. Next stitch four. Next stitch five. Next stitch six. Fluff. And the last stitch seven. Seven. So one single crochet in each stitch around, keeping a stitch count of seven. Then we are going to, I'm actually going to pause there and just trim that down, get it out of the way. Put that inside. Then we need to, there's our fake stitch there to trick us. Chain one's probably disappeared. Find your first single crochet and slip stitch into there. Just join around. Okay, so it looks a little bit like that. Then we are going to, what are we going to do next? We're going to chain one, chain one, one single crochet in the same stitch we just slip stitched into. Then we're going to single crochet the next two together. So go into the next stitch, pull through, stop, next stitch, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three, single crochet two together. Do that for the next two as well. So next stitch, pull through, stop, next stitch, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three, single crochet those two together, and then the last two, should have two left, single crochet those two together as well. Pull through, stop, into the last stitch, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three. I'm just going to pause there because we need to stuff our... Um, Stuff are uh, radish, that's it. I was trying to think what it's called then. So, you get a little bit of stuffing, and again, just stuff your radish. Okay, so when you finish stuffing your little radish, we're going to there's our fake stitch, skip that, there's our chain one, there's our first single crochet. Find your first single crochet, you might have to pull your hook over a bit, put your hook in there. But instead of yarning over with the pink, we're actually going to yarn over with the white. So, get your white yarn. And just put that over your hook instead, hold it with your finger on the other side. Bring that through that first single crochet and do a little slip stitch. So now we're working with the white. And then we're going to finish up with chain one, chain one, then go back into the same stitch you just slip stitched into. So you want to go back into that same stitch you just slip stitched into and do a chain one. And we need to do one single crochet in each stitch around. And your stitch count should have gone down to four when you did those decreases. So that's one. Next stitch. Two. Next stitch. Three. And the last one, next stitch, four. Okay, so one single crochet in each stitch around, keeping a stitch count of four. And then find your first single crochet that you did in white. 
and slip stitch into there. Oh, and then we're finished. So we can cut, cut our yarn, just pull the white through, and then just going to tie a knot for the white and the pink. And I'm going to trim the pink down, but not the white yet. And I'm just going to hide that pink tail end on the inside before we sew it closed. Then taking a yarn needle and your tail end you've just cut the white, we're going to sew the remaining hole closed, but just leave the other tail end sticking out. Go into the next stitch. So let's find the next stitch. There's the next stitch. Go into the next stitch and out the next. And just drawstring it close into the next stitch, out the next stitch, like so, and then just go over and then out through the centre for the middle, like so. Okay, then what we're going to do to get the little furry effect is we're going to trim the yarn down to about there and then all you need to do is just pull apart the tail ends, just pull the, the, uh, the fibres apart, just make them fuzzy. And then you get your little fluffy roots, like so. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the little green leaves at the top, and they're not too difficult, so let's put that down. We need to get our green yarn, and you need to chain four. Just chain four with your green yarn. Chain one, two, three, four. So chain four. Then we're going to do a slip stitch and our second stitch and hook. Now we don't count the loop on our hook. There's our first stitch, there's our second. Do a little slip stitch in there. So bring the yarn through straight for the loop on your hook. Then we're going and then in the, the next chain, I can't speak, next chain, I'm gonna do a double crochet, so yarn over. Bring the yarn through and do a double crochet. Then in the last chain, should have one chain left, do a slip stitch. Okay, then we're going to chain four again. One, two, three, four, and do the same thing again. Slip stitch in your second stitch and hook. Don't count the loop on your hook. Next chain, a double crochet. And slip stitch in the last chain. Do I say slip stitch at the beginning? Should be a slip stitch first, then a double crochet, then a slip stitch. Then chain four again. One, two, three, four. Slip stitch in your second stitch from hook. And a double crochet in the next chain. And a slip stitch in the last chain. Okay. Then what you want to do is find the very very first chain that you did on this first leaf, put your hook in there and do a slip stitch into there to join the leaves, like so. Then all we're going to do is leave a little bit of yarn for sewing and then what we're going to do is just literally sew that onto the top of our little radish. So I'm just going to Take my tail end. First of all, just go over just to lean off that final stitch. Then I'm just going to sew it onto here. Go down for the centre and out through a stitch. Tail end that way. Then go back in where you came out, back up to the centre. That disappears on the inside and gets caught on the stuffing. And then just sew over and down and just do the same thing again until it's sewn on securely. So that's securely fastened into place. And then all you need to do to hide your tail end is, once I can get my tail end out, there we go. 
is you just so go back in where you came out go over to the other side anywhere it doesn't matter that disappears on the inside and then just push your project down cut as close as you can and then that should disappear on the inside and if it doesn't you can just pop it in with the end of your yarn needle onto the inside do the same for the other tail end and uh, and then i'll come back and show you the finished radish okay so there we go there is our little finished radish with the little leaves on top and now we're going to move on to the last one which is the leek okay so for the leek what we're going to do is chain four to begin chain four in the white so we start off with the white chain four one two three four then find your first single crochet uh, first chain and do a slip stitch just like we did before create a little loop and to the center of that loop we're going to work six single crochet okay six so find the center put your hook in there wrap it around the chains now we do six single crochet so one two three Four, five, and six. Just pull the tail into close that hold a bit. Then slip stitch into your first single crochet. I'm not sure how much you can. Well, you can see with the white. Not the best colour to use. Slip stitch into your first single cr crochet. Okay, so you've got six stitches in total. Then we're going to do three rounds of just chain one, one single crochet and the same stitch you just slip stitched into and one single crochet in each stitch around. So we're going to chain one, go back into that same stitch you just slip stitched into, do a single crochet, do one single crochet in each stitch around. So you've still got the stitch count of six. That's two, three. And let's do that for three rounds, okay? Three rounds. That's one six. There's your fake stitch to trick you. Chain one, skip the fake stitch, fake stitch, skip the chain one. Find your first single crochet and slip stitch into there. Make sure to pop it out in this direction. Okay, do that twice more. Chain one, one single crochet in the same stitch you slip stitched into. One single crochet in each stitch around. Five, six. This time, when we slip stitch into our first single crochet, we're going to join the green. So there's our fake stitch. Skip that. Skip the chain one, which you probably can't even see. Find your first single crochet. But instead of yarning over with the white, we're going to yarn over with the green. So drape the green over. Bring that through, do a slip stitch to join the round. Then we're going to do one more round of just one single crochet in each stitch round. We'll do it in the green. So chain one, don't count that as a stitch. Go back into that same first single crochet that you slip stitched into and join the green and do a single crochet. And do one single crochet in each stitch around. That's one, two, Then find your first single crochet and slip stitch into there. That first single crochet. Okay, I'm just going to pause it there because what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the white yarn. If I don't cut it too low, there should be another white. Cut the white yarn. And 
and somewhere in here should be another tail end. We just pull that through, there it is. There's our beginning white tail end. Ooh, that's sticking out the bottom. Then get the the other white tail end. Thread that onto your yarn needle and sew that one out through the bottom. So go onto the inside. Sew that out through the bottom as well. So you've got these two white tail ends and then just trim them down to about there and do the same thing as you did for the radish just pull your threads apart so they get all fluffy and they look like roots like so and they look like little roots at the end of your um leek i've been calling this a radish i don't know i'm very tired <laughs> uh a leek and then with the green one we're just going to hide our green tail end on the inside. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move on to the little leaves and to do that we first of all I'm going to chain one and do one single crochet in the same stitch we just slip stitched into. Then we'll do one single crochet in the next stitch. But then we're going to turn and go back in the opposite direction, get, making sure to go into that first stitch. And that first stitch do a single crochet. I'm not going to chain one or anything at the end, we're just literally going to turn. Do a single crochet in there and single crochet in the next stitch. Then turn for the third time, one single crochet in each of those two stitches. One and two. Then turn for the fourth time, one single crochet in each stitch, one and two. Then turn for the fifth time, do one single crochet in each stitch, one and two. Then turn for the sixth time and do one single crochet in each stitch one and two then turn for the last time seventh time and we're going to single crochet those two together so go into the first stitch bring the yarn through go into the second stitch bring the yarn through yarn over pull through all three then what we're going to do is we're going to slip stitch neatly down the edge of this leaf back to the base. So all we're going to do is just, you haven't got proper stitches to work into, but just find some little holes, little gaps in those stitches and just work some little slip stitches as best as you can. She says. <laughs> there you go. You manage about six down the edge. And then when you're back at the bottom, just slip stitch into that second stitch that already had the single crochet in. So just go back into that one. It's already got a single crochet in it. You just want to go back into there and do a little slip stitch. Okay. That should leave you with four stitches on the main circle. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into the next stitch and do exactly the same thing again. We do one single crochet in the next stitch, one single crochet in the next stitch, then we turn one single crochet in the first stitch, one single crochet in that second stitch. So then we turn for a third time, for our third row, one, one single crochet in each stitch, turn for your fourth row, one single crochet in each stitch, turn for the fifth row, 
one single crochet in each stitch. Turn for the sixth row, one single crochet in both stitches. Turn for the seventh row, single crochet, two together. Okay, so the last stitch. And over four foot all three. And then slip stitch down the edge, slip stitch in the same one with a single crochet in, and repeat the same thing for the last two stitches for the third leaf. So it's going to slip stitch down the edge. Okay. And then when you get to the bottom, you can just slip stitch into the next stitch. And Leaving a little bit of tail for sewing, just cut our yarn and just pull that through. Then what we're going to do is we're just going to put a little bit of stuffing on the inside on there. So I'm just going to stuff the inside of that. A little bit of stuffing. Okay, so finished stuffing the inside of that. Then I'm just going to use this remaining tail end. Just put on my yarn needle. I'm just going to sew this hole closed. Neatly as I can from side to side. Then all I'm going to do is just sew that down there and go back in where I came out and just come back up just to secure the the yarn. Squeaky. And then trim the excess down. And there we go. If we just pull those back up sort out our stuffing. There is our little finished mini leek. Perfect to go with all our other vegetables. And as you can see with this, I showed you in part one, the little ground, you can pop it in its little pocket as if it's buried in the ground and then little ones can come and pick the vegetables. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed that part with the vegetables and the, in part one, I showed you the little pocket ground. And the very, very last square we're going to be working on is the simple flower grass field. And this is just a very simple row, um, square rather, of just 18 half double crochets, foundation stitches, and then 15 rows of half double crochets. So we're just going to get our green yarn and work a very simple square. So I'm going to do the 18 half double crochet foundation stitches. And like I said, if you hate doing the half double crochet foundation stitch, you can of course chain 19 and work one half double crochet in your third stitch and hook, and then one half double crochet in each stitch across. And little chains at the end count as a half double crochet as well. But we're going to do the half double crochet foundation stitch. So I'm going to chain two. Yarn over, go into our first chain, bring the yarn through, then we create our foundation chain by pulling for the first loop only. Yarn over, pull for all three. You see the little foundation chain there, and then the three loops for your half double crochet. Next one, yarn over, skip the three loops one, two, three. Find the little Foundation chain, pull for the first loop only again, creates our next foundation chain. Yarn over, pull, put all three. And if you're new to this, I recommend going to um, part one where I go a lot slower on doing this. So we need 18 half double crochet foundation stitches. Let's go up to the last one again, finding that little upside down V on the left hand side. Put your hook in there, making sure to go under both loops, bring the yarn through, pull for the first loop only foundation chain, yarn over, pull for all three for your half double crochet. And there is our 18 half double crochet foundation stitches. And like I said, if you're new to this, go check out part one where I go slower, much slower in more detail. Okay, and then all we're going to do is just literally chain one and turn and do one half double crochet in that very first stitch and one half double crochet in each stitch across. And we're gonna do this for 15 rows in total. Our first row obviously is our foundation row, so that's number one. So we need to do 14 more rows of just chain one, turn, one half double crochet in each stitch across, keeping a stitch count of 18. 
Okay, so let's do that for 14 more rows. We get 15 rows in total for a simple square. So I shall do that and I shall just come back and show you the little flower and then we're pretty much done. Okay, so I'm just coming up to the last few stitches on the 15th row. And all I've done is just been working chain one, turn, one half double crochet in each stitch across. And I've done that for I've done that for uh, 14 rows plus the foundation row equals 15. You should have 15 rows in total. And it should measure the same as all your other squares, which is either 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters, which we've been working to, or the same size as the squares you've been working to. So there we go, I've cut our yarn, pull that through, we're gonna hide our tail ends, and then we need to make two of those. You need two of the grass, plain grass fields. And we're just gonna make some little mini flowers, which we're gonna sew onto the top of our grass field. So pick a color, let's pick orange this time, because we've been working with orange quite a lot today. So let's put that up there, I shall hide my tail ends after. And to make the flowers, what we do is we chain four, so do a little slip knot. We chain four, one, two, three, and four. We chain four, and then we slip stitch in our first chain to form a loop. It's very similar to all the vegetables. Find your first chain, bring the yarn through the first chain, and straight for the loop on your hook. Creates a little loop with a hole in the middle. And into that hole, no, we're not gonna do anything in that hole actually. What we're going to do first is we're going to chain two, one and two, chain two. Then we're gonna do a single crochet into that center hole. So find the center hole, don't confuse it with the chain one. Find that center hole, bring the yarn through the center of that loop and do a single crochet, a little single crochet. Then we're gonna chain one, and slip stitch into that center hole. Let's do a little slip stitch. And there's our first little petal. I'm gonna repeat that another four times. So we're gonna chain two, chain two, do a single crochet in the center loop, chain one, slip stitch in the center loop. Okay, petal number two. Next petal, chain two, one and two. Single crochet into the center loop. Chain one. Pull, we might have to pull your stitches over. Slip stitch into the center. Okay, for your third petal, move it over. Same again, chain two. Move the stitches over. Single crochet into the center, chain one, stitches over, slip stitch into the center. That's our fourth petal. Then the last one, chain two, one and two. Just move everything over. Single crochet into the center, chain one slip stitch into the center and then we're finished. Leave it a little bit for sewing. Bring that through. Use the other tail ends just pull the whole hole closed. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim this down, tail end. Just cut that off. Don't confuse that with the one we're working with. Then we're going to take our yarn needle, thread it on. The first thing I'm going to do is just sew through the center, just to bring that last petal down. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna help shape this little mini flower. Just put it onto your grass field somewhere, doesn't matter where, and sew through. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna come up through the middle, right through the center, and then we're gonna sew over, but just tuck it underneath. We wanna go back a little bit down and then you want that tail end to come between the petals and pull nice and tight and repeat that all the way around so come back through and do the next one between the next two petals 
And even though you have little petal shapes already, this just helps accentuate them even more. See that for the next one. Three, back to the centre. Four, back to the centre. And the last one. My needle's running out. Thread's running out rather. This one to the back between the last two petals. Just make sure it is between the petals, like so. And there completes our little flower. Just helps accentuate the petals. Then all we do is hide our tail end on the back and I seem to have caught my other tail end in as well. So all you need to do is tie in all your tail ends, repeat that for in different colours for as many or as little flowers as you like and so I shall do that and then I shall come back and show you the finished squares and then we'll look at sewing all the pieces we've been making in this crochet line together to actually finish. Okay. Okay, so there we go. I've tied in all my ends and I've made an extra couple of flowers, one in white, one in yellow. So you need two of these little um, simple uh, flower grass fields type thing. So where are we at now? We are finished. They are all the squares that you need for this crochet long. Um, so you need two of our little flower fields. We need one of our little vegetable patches with our vegetables. And last week I showed you how to make the ploughed field and you need two of those. And I also showed you how to make the little wheat field with hay bales, you need one of those. And the week before that I showed you how to make the pond piece and we needed four of those. And I've also shown you how to make some round trees and a little bonus video of a little fir tree, pine tree. So you need four of those, I did some trees, and you needed, in week one, the first week, I showed you how to make the dreaded loop stitch <laughs> long grass squares here, and we needed three of those, three of those, and four, we haven't done this in the right order of tutorials now, but four of these straight road squares, you should have four of these now, and um, I forgot last, uh, it was episode three, wasn't it? I showed you how to make the curved road square as well. We needed three of those. So now we are going to join them all together. Okay, so I'm gonna bring this in. Now you may have designed your own um, sort of diagram of how you want to put these all together, but this is the basic layout that I came up with, four by five squares. And we have the flower field there and then a long grass field um, square there. And then two pond pieces, two straight roads, curved road, grass. That represents the um, wheat field. <laughs> and then a straight road, grass and a flower field. Then a pond, two ponds, two curved roads. And they're the ploughed fields and the vegetable patch there and a straight road. Okay, there. so for sewing your squares together, we're going to be using the back loop sort of uh, whip stitch. Um, what we're going to do though is we are going to, rather than just using one colour for sewing everything together, I mean you can do that, but uh, I, I like to keep things quite neat. So I'm going to use the similar colours as to the um, squares that I want to crochet together. So I'm going to take a length of the brown and finding my scissors, cut myself a little quick length to show you. And I'm going to use my yarn needle so we're going to sew these together rather than crochet them together. And what you want to do is you want to have the right side facing you. This is the right side, that's going to be the wrong side. And for the other one you want the wrong side. So you want wrong sides together basically. So you've got right side, right side. And what we're going to do when we get our neat, because obviously we've got two edges with proper stitches and two edges without proper stitches, but I'll show you the ones with proper stitches first. We're going to find our first stitch and what we want to do is to go, that's the whole stitch there, what we want to do is to go for the back loop of the stitch of the one on the front, then find the corresponding stitch the other side and go through the back loop, the front loop only, so rather than going through the whole stitch, 
you want to just go for the front loop. So you want the back loop of the one nearest you and the front loop of the one furthest away from you. And then we're just going to sew that through. And I'm going to go through that again just to secure into place. And I'm going to do that all the way across. So for the next one, there's the back loop. Then find the front loop of the next stitch at the back there. So back loop, front loop. And what this does, it just keeps the sewing to the back of the project. So back loop and front loop. Back loop. do that all the way across one and there we go so all that happens when we flatten that out it creates a nice flat seamless seam that you can't really detect so and it's nice and flat on the back as well and because we've done it in brown you can't see any color change or anything like that so what I'm going to show you now is um, I'll put a couple of road pieces together and um, show you how to do it when we haven't got proper stitches and just do it as best we can. Um, what I'm going to do is for these ones, because we haven't got proper stitches, let me show you how to do those as well. Well, how I'm going to do it anyway. What I'm going to do is take a short length of green yarn and have a couple of those. That's fine. You may want to do longer bits so you can carry on doing more squares, but I'm just going to show you quickly. And then I'm going to get some grey yarn as well, little bits of grey yarn. Get my grey yarn, here we are. And it's never handy. Where's the end? <laughs> well, there we go. So I'm going to take a little bit more length of the grey. And then I'm just going to start off with the green. Like so, and I'm going to do a similar method. I mean, there's no right or wrong side to these, but what I'm going to do is you don't have proper stitches to work in, but rather than starting right on the top, rather than starting right on the top, just go slightly to the back so it's almost sort of right on the top and then with this side rather than coming right across just come up slightly underneath so it's a similar similar method and then I'm just going to sew across in a similar way as I just showed you for the other one Do a couple of stitches in the green. Again, going to the back, going to the front. Okay, just so gonna do a couple of little stitches in green, and then I'm literally gonna swap to the grey. And you may just want to do green all the way across, which would probably be okay. And this is quite difficult to find the best way of sewing these together because you've got so many different colours to work with and patterns and you don't even have proper stitches to work with. So you're really going to just have to do it through trial and error. green out the way and the same again just keeping it to the back but it doesn't really matter because it's all in grey so it's really not going to show up so I can get in a right mess here I'm going to show you do this off camera because this is really fiddly on camera and uh, then come back and show you the road square okay so I've finished with the grey and then what I'm going to do is just literally swap back to another bit of green 
just for the other side but what I can use this green for is going along this edge so again just making sure to sort of go down from the top and then up Going down the top, up from the bottom, and probably get one more stitch in there, like so. And there's the edge of the road, and I've just joined green there, grey there, and then green there, and then because I've got nice neat stitches here, I can get a what piece can I get? I think I can get a check my little grid flower field. So now we're working proper stitches. We're going to do the same method as we did for the ploughed field, and we're just going to go into the back loop of stitch number 18, and then make sure you've got right wrong sides together. Find the front loop of the first stitch along there. Enjoy that as we go across. So back loop, then front loop. All the way across. So I'm going to do this for all of my squares, joining them as neatly as I can using similar colours, using this little sort of back loop whip stitch technique and doing it as best I can whether we don't have stitches and then I'll come back and show you the finished road play mat and there we go there is the finish uh, road play mat so I've just spent the last hour or so just quickly sewing all that together and hopefully if you've managed to follow the um, sort of back loop um, stitching effect on the back you should get fairly flat seams like that and I've just sewn where there's grey I've sewn in grey and where there's green I've sewn in green and it's kind of worked quite well actually um, I did brown across there but most of it was sewn in green and I just did little bits in blue here and there and stuff but it's worked quite well but hopefully you can do a neater job than me but this is the final layout so there we go but you can do any layout that you want to do and do as many of these squares as you can uh, be bothered to do, <laughs> other patients to do, to make this as big or as small as you like. And all that's left to do now is to add in our little toy cars. And this little uh, chick, mini chick, is, um, is I've done my mini chick tutorial and just made him in brown to make him look like a little duck. Um, there's the links in the description to that tutorial as well and of course to put our little vegetables to bed as well <laughs> but I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you've managed to follow along and I hope maybe you've been inspired to learn some new techniques and uh, stitches that you haven't tried before I hope it hasn't this hasn't been too advanced for anyone um, I can't do that one-handed <laughs> um, but yeah that's uh, next Friday we're going to be returning to our normal schedule of whatever it might be it'll be a surprise I do have some um, tutorials planned that I'm going to do um, but I will see you soon not only for some more crochet fun but I will see you soon for another crochet along as well because I have another one in the pipeline and this is not the end of this road play map because every so often I will do little expansion packs expand I can't speak today I'm exhausted I'm exhausted <sighs> it's been a big job <laughs> um, expansion packs to go alongside um, which is going to include things like railway lines and um, car parks and all sorts of little extra things as well like a little tractor as well so keep an eye out um, for those in videos tutorials on my youtube channel and on my blog um, they will come up every now and then as crochet extra tutorials but I shall leave you now and I look forward to seeing your finished crochet uh, road play mats as well you can join the facebook group that's dedicated to the crochet alongs and um, links in the description below go check that out i look forward to hopefully seeing you over there but i will see you soon i'm going to go rest now because my hands are very very weary from crocheting and sewing and designing and uh, writing it up video filming editing and the whole caboodle but i really hope it's been worth it and i hope there's been some happy little ones out there enjoying some play mats and i'll see you soon bye bye guys see you bye